Hi, welcome to this video about how to create a Sardi icon. So these icons up here are one of the many choices you have. And uh, this video is about how to make one. And I want to make one for flame shots. So I'm trying it out because flame shots could be handy for me. It's a little application. If you click on it, or if you start it up and then it's present here and you can just drag it here and tell to people it's here. You have to be at look here or make uh, some little um, well, reference to what they should know or what should they should uh, take care of. And then basically say something, put it on the clouds, uh, put it on the disk. So a lot of choices here and then that's super. So this flame shot is nice, but if you install it, it's gonna stick out because it does not have an Sardi icon yet. So. A little bit backend office, little like little bit production. How do you create an icon? And maybe I can inspire somebody to make their own icons and then deliver me just one. I just need one, and I'll make uh, all the rest. So what I do here is I have installed it. So yay, flame shots! And then I saw that it actually came from the Arch Linux uh, repo, which is super, which means it's already um, there community Arch Linux that's uh, what it means then I installed it went to Pamac down here opened it up and looked where it, what do we get basically what is uh, being uh, saved on a hard disk and we get the application itself and where uh, we can launch it user share applications is like double click and you execute something and here we have down here we have some PNGs which are not very keen on having because I need an SVG. All these Sardi icons are SVGs, which is much more fun. Flameshot does SVGs there. So what I can do is start with that and have a look. So let's navigate to it. File system, user share icons. You just can type user enter, share, enter, icons, enter. So that's where we are already. And then high color high color, scalable and apps, scalable and apps, and in here somewhere with the F flame shot, we should see it up here. So this thing can be used and reused because people are used to an icon like Spotify. We, they want to have the same look and that's normal. So why not just say copy this thing over and where will I copy it? Well, I will copy it next to my other guys. Um, now let's let's work on the desktop. Paste. So flame shots is can be opened, should be opened with Inkscape. So this is actually a tutorial about how to create icons, and it's basically working with a tool called Inkscape. So SVGs are vectors. You can make make them smaller and bigger. Doesn't really matter. And you see there are parts of it. Control Z. And um, let's now do a make a create a new icon. So I have a beautiful icon and a beautiful set that actually looks all the same because now somewhere here it's gonna stick out. I will go to the icons. I will go to Sardi Flexible. That's where I start. And then um, I'll start it's scalable in apps. There is something called default. This is the way I start first. This is my default icon. Sometimes I make a mistake and I overwrite my default icon. So I have a default icon backup. That's why it is there. So default icon is what I open. It's the flexible color. So it's a blue color. And this is the thing you need to provide to me. And then I, if you created something and say, oh, I was missing that icon. It will make my work and the icon team uh, better and my work less. So this thing is a nice little elephant. We don't need the elephant anymore. So the elephant is gone. Then I'm going to put this one over here again. What I need to have is this, this and this, but in one go. So what I'll do is I could delete actually the purple thing that's gone already. So we can't copy paste that over. 
I need to select all of these, right? So that's a way to select everything. Another way is to, was it shift? Yes, keeping shift in. So my left shift of my keyboard is pressed in and I click with my left mouse. This is now a group. And when it's a group, I can say, well, it's not yet a group. Now I can group it. That's easier because now we can just move it about and resize it any way we want, but that would be bad. Never resize like this, Voila. like this. That's not nice, neither is this. So you need to keep the proportions. How you do that? It was control pressed. If you keep control, left control pressed, then it will always look nice. And if you unpress it, you'll just make it or break it. So this thing, control C, to here, control V. And like I said, with control pressed, you can make it bigger again and put it in here. So that's our first step. So we can reuse icons. And I think the developers will appreciate that we have the same icon as they have. So that's still default icon. So I'm gonna save before I save here and forget that it's actually called default icon. I'm gonna name it and you can't make any typos here. Flame shot. That's what it needs to have as a name. Okay. There are things here that you won't see. I have a optimized SVG output. I've installed something special so that when it's saved, it's a minimal smallest possible SVG. That's maybe for another tutorial. Anyway, this thing is still, of course, looking all colorful. And if you take a look at the icons, it should be all white. So either we take this and stop there. Or let's have a go at it. We ungroup it again. We take this one. And I don't think in the scripts will matter if we make this a little bit more transparent. And here as well, some difference. And then maybe, how about that? I'm still thinking if it would uh, influence our scripts at some point or not. I'm not sure because we change the FFF later in a color and the rest here the last two guys D2 is all about transparency so I think we're good that's an idea or control Z Z Z and play it safe and this could be our new flame shot which is actually gonna play it safe okay so that's one thing then the shadow was around the elephant, so we don't need the shadow around the elephant, right? We need the flames. So what I'll do now is this button over here, or how do you say that, this, this element, edit pass by notes. These elements are all now a little bit different. What I'm going to do now is say Control A. All the notes, let's make this bigger, all the notes are red. I'm going to click once. I'm going to click twice on it. And now everything is, right, is straight. You see straight lines. So Control A twice on make selected notes corner. Then don't forget to click somewhere else because everything is red. Now everything is gray again. And then we can start working. Here is a point. I drag this point to here because the sun is coming from northwest, right? meaning the shadow is going to fall like this and these guys there is no shadow here i move them behind it scroll a little bit up the number three on your numeric keypad one two three are interesting to use okay and then no shadow here this is a mistake what you see now is a handle that you can direct the, the shadow now this handle here right so if you click here you have a handle here we don't want that so control Z Z I just want to click on the red one or well 
first it's a gray one this one it can go up here okay this one can go there you can start deleting by the way let's do that as well delete delete and this guy goes somewhere here that's gonna be the difficult one this guy is deleted this guy can go up here this guy can go and this guy goes here make an extra pointer by double clicking here I'm gonna put you there I'm dragging the line behind the white so I won't see the shadow coming up and now the difficult part so this what I'm doing now is control press control and the mouse the scroll mouse button over the mouse you scroll in and out why is this difficult? What we need to do is to make sure that this line is parallel with this line and parallel with that line is parallel with that line. And this is only four lines, but there are other icons there that you say is now straight or is now not straight. We can kill this one as well here and drag this line by doing this. So that's done. This guy is definitely not in the right position the question is when is it going to be parallel so this line should be the same as that line it should be parallel it should be parallel it should be parallel now what i'm doing is all the time turning my head on the side to see if this line and this line are parallel or not and it's really strange, but it is. At some point, you you start to have a knack for it, and see. Okay, this is how it's supposed to be. Then you zoom in, you zoom out, check again, click again. Say this needs to be a little bit more like this. is crazy I know so that's what I do all the time <laughs> working on these icons if you want to get out of this as points here this vector or whatever you call them paths by the notes and then you get in here and then you have a look at your finalized work control shift s that's what I do control shift shift because I need this special inkscape thing not this guy but the guy that I have installed to the optimized SVG, save, much better. It removes lots of stuff. So we have the smallest possible SVG to download the system is fast and all that. I think I'm going to revisit it after the video, but I think you know now how I create icons. And so if you have an icon or an application and say, oh, damn, there's a missing icon but I've seen the tutorials of Eric. This is the only thing I need, this blue thing, and then I'll develop the other six from it and um, we'll have a completer system, completer icon package. All right, enjoy working with Inkscape.